Well, welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. This is the Ozarks first fast and local, the Ozarks on only online news report. And today we have Jamie Warner with us. Jamie, thanks for being here. Absolutely. <laughs> We're talking winter weather. You know, that's my favorite thing in preparation for this. <laughs> I actually wore my snowflake earrings because for snow lovers, I think you have some good news for us. Yeah, some good news. You know, a lot of folks don't necessarily like snow, but we are in the Ozarks. It's part of the country. We're going to get it every winter season. So yeah. you just kind of got to grin and bear it, if, <laughs> even if you don't like it. And it looks like this may be a a snowier winter versus years past. Okay, part of the reason for that, it's uh, beginning to be an El Nino year. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does that mean for us? Okay, so El Nino is just in reference to uh, a sea surface temperature pattern focused in the equatorial Pacific. So this is a big map. Uh, you can see, you know, all the continents, uh, particularly just kind of focus in on North America, drop down to South America, and then look left from there. You see that big stripe of red. That is El Nino, really, in essence. Uh, that is where we have warmer than normal water temperatures. And oftentimes, uh, those warmer than wa normal water temperatures will pile up next to the coastline of South America. Uh, this year, it looks like while that has been the case, it looks like that that sea surface temperature pattern is going to evolve throughout the winter season. And we're going to see those warm water temperatures migrating toward the central Pacific. The other factor is that because of the abnormally warm water temperatures across the Pacific, I don't think that this strong El Nino is going to behave like a typical strong El Nino. I mean, because our last typical strong El Nino, it was like no snow at all. It was yeah. a warm winter. Yeah, 15, 16, uh, last big El Nino. Uh, in that winter, you know, it was a blowtorch winter across the United <laughs> States. There was not a lot of cold air. We only had three inches of snow for that wow. entire winter season. We're talking from the beginning of November all the way through the end of April. So Jeez. it was a snowless winter. It was also a warm winter. I don't think that this strong El Nino is going to behave that way. I think it's going to behave more like a weak to moderate El Nino. And then as we see those water temperatures shift toward the Central Pacific, it becomes even a hybrid of that, uh, more of what we call a uh, Modokai type El Nino. Okay, so the year you think it's going to be most like is 2009, 2010. Yes, so this graphic that we're looking at right now, this is the upper level pattern. Uh, of that winter. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back to December through February 2009 to 2010. This is what the pattern looked like across the northern hemisphere. You go to the next graphic, this is a forecast of this upcoming, and we can actually go past this graphic. This is a forecast of, well, maybe not. I think we've lost it, but. <laughs> Was it this one you were wanting? I think I can find it. There it there is. There it go. is. Yeah. We so go back. this graphic right there, that's the forecast for this upcoming winter season. And initially when I had these lined up, I had them kind of back to back mm -hmm. because they're very similar. Yeah. Uh, and because of that similarity, this is, uh, you know, you can kind of look at, at at that year, 2009, 2010. Very as, similar. Yeah, as, as you know, they say uh, past is prologue. This is a scenario where we can take a look at that analog year mm -hmm. and say, hey, maybe this winter is going to be an awful lot like that. Now, I also have some video. This was the winter of 2009, 2010. This video is from a snowstorm, I believe, at the end of January, where Springfield saw mm, quite a bit of snow. I can't think off the top of my head, but they saw close to 20 inches of snow that entire year. Yeah, you know, I looked at a lot of years, and I looked at other years that were similar, but 2009, 2010, I think, is the most similar, and it's not just in reference to the El Nino that was going on. It's other factors uh, like the uh, MJO phase, which is Madden Julian Oscillation. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a pressure pattern over toward Indonesia. And when you get into favorable phases for cold weather, like we had that winter, then you have colder than normal conditions. And I think that that's going to be another factor for this coming winter season. Uh, so all that said, I believe that this winter will behave similarly to 2009-2010. Case in point, if you look back at November of 2009, mm -hmm. temperatures were warmer than normal across a broad part of the United States, which including this area, saw, yeah. which is exactly what we mm -hmm. saw. December was not very snowy, okay. and I don't think this December is going to be very <laughs> snowy. So there are already some very, very close parallels to that winter season, which gives me confidence that this is going to evolve in that way. What happened in 2009, 2010 is that it was a slow start to the winter, but once we got to January, February, and March, temperatures were below normal, and up. we had above normal snowfall at times. Okay, let's talk about analog years. When you hear the term analog years, that's just the um, all the years in the past that most 
correlate yeah. to what we're going through right now. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I took a sampling of, uh, I think we've got five years up there that were similar, 2009, 2010, sort of leading the pack, but mm -hmm. there were other years that were similar. You take that and you going get back a, to 1957. <laughs> well, yeah, and I even look back beyond that. But oh, wow. yeah, these are the these are the winter seasons that were, were closest uh, okay. closest fit. Uh, when you do a composite or a blend of what happened that winter season across those years, what you see, what stands out is that temperatures in those winters tend to be much colder than normal in the southeast and much warmer than normal in the Pacific Northwest, possibly into the upper Midwest. Okay. That's exactly how I think that this winter is gonna behave. So Even this though is your forecast for temperatures this winter? Correct, this is the uh, temperature forecast. So again, the focus for much colder than normal temperatures in the south, southeast, maybe up the east coast, but we're gonna find below normal temperatures here locally in the Ozarks as well. I think it'll be a slow start, but as we push into January, February, and March, temperatures will tend to run below normal. Okay, very good. And how about precipitation? When you take those analog years and put them in for precipitation, what does that show? Well, El Nino typically generates a very active southern storm track, and I think that's mm. still going to be the case. And you can see that when we take a look at the composite of all of those winter seasons, you can see the wetter than normal conditions focus from California, across southern Texas, the Gulf Coast, and then up through the middle Atlantic. Okay, those are some areas that really need to see it too. Yeah, and, and I think locally, uh, we tend to be normal to below normal. And so that's what I think is going to happen this coming winter season. Is but that we're, you don't think that means necessarily below normal snowfall. Yeah, it, yeah. But just because you have below normal precipitation, it doesn't mean that you're going to have below normal snowfall. All you have to have is cold enough air in place <laughs> when the storms do happen. Yeah. And I think that because of that active southern storm track, we're going to find that. And I think this is going to be a good year for folks in the deep south also for winter weather. And, you know, I, I hail from Mississippi and, <laughs> you know, I was always itching for winter weather when I lived down there and growing up as a kid. This would be a good winter yeah. if you love winter weather in the south. But I think we're also going to see above normal snowfall here locally in the Ozarks as well. You know, well. some of those years that you pointed back to, 2009, 2010, we saw almost 20 inches of snow here in Springfield. You also pointed to 2002 and 2003, which I remember I was a senior in high school. It snowed a ton almost 40 inches that year and then going beyond that you know 20 inches is about what you think we're going to reach yeah well I mean you know just using my my favorite analog 09 uh, 09 10 mm -hmm. uh, we had just over 20 inches of snowfall for that season again it was a slow start but it really picked up in January we had some snow in February and we also had some <laughs> late season snow in March which got us over 20 inches for that season you did mention also 2002 2003 mm -hmm. a big year for winter weather here yeah. locally uh, over 35 inches and there were some other other big total years in those analogs. Uh, so when I blend all that out, what I find is I think we're probably going to be looking at 15 to 20 inches for this winter season. 13 inches is average. So we're going to be looking at above normal snowfall this winter, I believe. Well, I'm a snow lover. I like what I hear with that. But thanks for your time. That was really interesting. And, you know, if you want to get more into the weeds of exactly what that means, Jamie's posted more on his Facebook page. You can look there. And we also have a story on OzarksFirst.com that'll give more information as well. Jamie, thank you very much. You bet. Okay. Well, thanks again. You can check out OzarksFirst.com for more.